Well, hey, Northwest Hills Christian Church family and friends. Uh, welcome back as we are in the midst of our Holy Week devos this week. Um, today's Tuesday, and so we're going to spend some time talking about the day that Jesus entered the temple. Uh, we'll pick that up in Matthew chapter 21. Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of the people that sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And take a few moments to put yourself in that situation, looking around. What do you see as Jesus is turning over these tables and he's, it's, I mean, Jesus, we've spent some time around him and he's, we've seen not necessarily this side of him. He's, he's irate about what's happening in this moment. Now think about that for a second. Think about the zeal that he has for his father's house. Join me in, in prayer as we pray together. Zealous God, I marvel that you are jealous for my praise. Not that it is going to add anything to you, but that it would grant everything to me. I rejoice that you would place yourself within the crowded, greedy courts of my heart to drive out that which seeks to replace you. You alone are my salvation and my joy. Israel's massive celebration of the Passover was, was drawing near and the temple courts would have been just busting at the seams with all sorts of people, uh, pilgrims coming to worship during this season. And Jews would have been just, just streaming in and um, they're ready to offer their sacrifices, but some of them because they've traveled such a long way, uh, they, didn't, they weren't able to bring their animal with them, so they, they have to purchase an animal so that they can have their sacrifice. And this is all what's going on. This is all a part of the normal festivities. Let's transport back though. And to, to where it all started in Exodus. Notice what God commands. On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. This was God's command before the final plague. And, and uh, in the whole Egypt exodus scenario, the blood of the lambs would be painted over the doorposts of the homes, and, um, and judgment was coming into Egypt. And so the only way to, to get out of this was to have the lamb's blood over the doorpost of the home. The, the Spirit of God would, would come through all the land of Egypt, and whoever did not have the lamb's blood over the doorpost of their home would suffer unbearable loss, loss of their firstborn. So during that time when Jesus entered the temple, all of Israel is going to be celebrating this day leading up to um, the actual Passover where they offer their, their sacrifices, where they celebrate the, the celebration of unleavened bre bread. And Jesus in this moment is, is trying to get everybody focused on what the true sacrifice is. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 16. Keep the Passover 
to the Lord your God. You shall offer the Passover sacrifice to the Lord your God. You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread, that all the days of your life you may remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt. The people of Israel were engaging in a commanded celebration in order that they might remember the day that God brought salvation and, and also that they would know that salvation requires a sacrifice. But when Jesus enters the, ta- the temple during the day of preparation for the Passover, he, he temporarily halts the sacrifices and, and, and everything that's going on in that moment. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus brought the entire uh, temple system to a screeching halt in the busiest week in order to say something very specific, I think. The true sacrifice, I think Jesus is saying, is right here before your very eyes. Jesus disrupts this whole preparation thing in order to say the true Passover lamb is not with these money changers. It's right here in front of you. And take a a few minutes to reflect and and to pray about um, just uh, thanking God for being the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, my Passover lamb, thank you for being the unblemished sacrifice that I need. No matter how many sacrifices I offer, no matter how many deeds I perform, nothing will be adequate to save me from the evil that lurks within my own heart and the punishment that that I deserve. I look to you alone, Jesus, to clear the temple from my heart and stand as its only trust. There's this amazing connection that the Apostle Paul makes with the Passover and Jesus. Uh, Look at 1 Corinthians. Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. As we close, spend a few minutes in prayer asking Jesus, inviting Jesus to come and and be your heart's clearer, that he would would clear out uh, all the, flip the tables of of self-reliance that you have in your heart. Uh, Beg him to drive out every last robber that wants to steal the joy in your soul. Never lose sight of this mighty image of Jesus standing in the temple as the replacement of the sacrifices in order for us to be able to be passed over our sins. He had to die. He, he, to cleanse the temple, He had to offer Himself as the final unblemished Lamb. Let's close with Hebrews chapter 7. Unlike the other high priests... He does not need to offer sacrifices day after day for his own sins and for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. And what a great, great thing. I hope you have a blessed, blessed day. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow.